Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in my opinion the i5 12400F is still worth it and better value for money than ever. It's less than 100 quid here in the UK and for that we get 6 cores 12 threads, the choice of DDR4 or DDR5 support and of course access to a decent upgrade path. It's often compared to the Ryzen 5 5600 or 5600X, also good choices for the price, but it is possible to get the Ryzen 7 5700X for under £100, at least before taxes on AliExpress and sometimes just 10 or 20 pounds more on secondhand selling sites such as eBay. That's why I wanted to compare these two today. I'm using a 4080 Super and testing at 1080p as we're likely to be more CPU bound, thus showcasing any and all differences between the two chips. I've got the i5 on a cheap H610M DDR4 board with 32 gigs of 3200 MHz DDR4 memory, and the Ryzen 7 has been tested with a B550M board as cheap A521s don't offer PCIe Gen 4 support for the graphics card. I've also used the same memory. Now the 5700X has 8 cores and 16 threads so as expected pulls ahead in the Cinebench R23 multi render as well as the DaVinci Resolve render which completed a lot quicker. The 12400F achieved a higher single core score, but if editing and other multi-core slash thread intensive workloads are what you'll be subjecting your system to, then the Ryzen is the better choice. Gaming is a different matter, and in some cases the results surprise me. I don't want to sound biased, but my appreciation for the i5, my personal CPU for the last couple of years, has just increased after today's results, and I'm going to be so reluctant to upgrade from this thing. Remember, I just selected a few of my favourites today at random, so other results may vary, but here are my findings. We'll start with the Black Myth benchmark at 1080p with the high preset. The i5 12400F hit 127 frames per second on average with a 1% low of 100 and a 0.1% low of 61. The Ryzen 7 5700X hit 126 frames per second. This does seem like a more GPU bound game even with these two chips paired with the 4080 Super and the differences here were mainly with the percentile lows. The Ryzen 7 hit a 1% low of 89 and a 0.1% low of 55 so it was a little worse overall and I'd have to say that the i5 felt slightly more consistent with this first result. For Cyberpunk 2077, I ran the in-game benchmark once again at 1080p with the Ultra preset. The i5 12400F hit an average of 149 with a 1% low of 71 and a 0.1% number of 40. With the 5700X, we saw a higher average frame rate of 153 frames per second. The 1% low was 71, so the same although the 0.1% uh, figure was 60 here compared to just 40 of the i5, so the consistency uh, was in the 5700X's favour this time around. And arguably these are actually the more important figures when it comes to testing certain CPUs. Starfield next, 1080p with the high preset, the i5 hits 72 frames per second with a 1% low of 39 and a 0.1% low of 28. Our little walk around a keel here proved to be quite intensive for this 6 core 12 thread CPU. That's not to say it wasn't also quite demanding for the Ryzen 8 core chip which averaged 71 pretty much the same, 1 FPS lower, a 1% low here of 40, which was one frame higher than the i5, and at the 0.1% low this time was 13. So in the more CPU intensive areas, like when we made our way uh, down a section of stairs to a lower level, we could really see more drops with the Ryzen chip, and it definitely felt a little less consistent here. For Baldur's Gate 3, I'm using the high preset. Now the i5 hit an average of 113 FPS, a 1% low of 71 and a 0.1% low of 44. The Ryzen 7 didn't quite hit the same average, it was 105 FPS for this one, with a 1% low of 61 and a 0.1% low of 44. So the 1% number was lower than that of the i5s, but the 0.1% numbers were the same. That said, because of the higher 1% figure, it felt slightly better on the i5, but it wouldn't have been noticeable had it not been for these on-screen benchmark tests. And as for all of these games, if you're playing in 1440p, then the GPU is probably going to be the limitation most of the time. And these differences are probably going to be less noticeable if you're gaming at 1440p or higher. 
Forza Horizon 5 now, 1080p with the Ultra preset, the i5 hit 180 frames per second with a 1% low of 130 and a 0.1% low of 107. The Ryzen 7 hit 179 frames per second with a 1% low of 121, so a little lower here and a 0.1% number that came in at 98. So again, a little less consistent with the Ryzen 7 5700X during the benchmark run. In Kingdom Come Deliverance, one of my favourites, it's a slightly older game but I love to test this one, the very high preset here with the HD textures enabled for 96 frames per second on the i5, a 1% low of 49 and a 0.1% low of 15, so definitely some problems in and around Retire here which is a pretty busy city area. The Ryzen 7 5700X hit 81 FPS, so quite a bit lower, more problems for this one, a 1% low of 42 and a 0.1% number of 25. So I have to say that this was slightly more consistent because of that 0.1% number, um, but it still suffered in these busier areas, that's for sure. Though um, I'm not sure which I'd rather play on in the long term. Finally then, we have the Red Dead Redemption 2 result, ultra textures, everything else on high. The i5 hit 151 FPS with a 1% of 98 and a 0.1% low of 87. The Ryzen 7 161, so this did a lot better on average here. The 1% low was 105 and the 0.1% was 94, so actually it did better than the i5 across the board. But overall the results were pretty mixed. In some cases the i5 seemed more consistent and in other cases the Ryzen 7 seemed more consistent and this is going to be the case across various games it all depends on what you're playing to be fair i do have to hand it to the i5 though it's been my personal cpu for a while and i'm constantly impressed that it does this well even when paired with the most basic h610m motherboard and 3200 megahertz ddr4 if i had it paired with the ddr5 board we would perhaps see better frame rate results but I've always stuck with this cheap board and I really can't complain to be honest put this bundle together a while ago and I'm going to be very reluctant to upgrade from it as part of my main build. There are definitely some cases where we see it suffering such as new games like Starfield for example and as time goes on I think we'll start to see more problems with consistency in the latest releases. All in all both chips are pretty decent. Some would say it's not worth building an AM4 system brand new but I disagree to be fair I mean because the price difference between AM4 and AM5 sometimes can be significantly higher once you factored in the RAM and that and the motherboards but out of these two either one is a decent choice for gaming though the Ryzen will pull ahead in those productivity related tasks that's all for this one let me know your thoughts down below thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you all next time